Hey guys, welcome back to the homestead. And today, welcome back to our house. Uh, it's mid-December, coming in on to the late part of December here in the Ozarks. It's starting to get pretty cold outside. Uh, we actually we have some, uh, I guess, a zero degree night that's projected for this upcoming week. So we've been really beating feet to get livestock enclosures done, um, livestock housing done, and then of course our home, getting it to a point where we're comfortable in it here in the winter. It's really wet here in the Ozarks, uh, much more so than what we had projected or expected. Uh, just over the last month, I think we've had a foot and a half of total precip, a foot and a half of rain. It's been wet. Um, we, we definitely haven't expected how wet and how cloudy, which has been really complicated living off grid on a solar system. Uh, we invested a lot of money into a really good solar system. So that's been a, a, quite a benefit. We can go about three days without sun, running just basic necessities here in the house. But anything more than that, and we're out of luck. So we've been out of luck actually for the most part for uh, about a month now. This is the first week where we've really had any more than about one day of sun at a time. Um, and we've had weeks, weeks without sun and a tremendous amount of rain. So it's been challenging to say the least. Here in our home, uh, we started doing an earthen floor. As you can see, we started doing that because uh, we really like earthen floor. We like the feel of it. We like its thermal mass. It stays cool in the summer, and once it's warmed up in the winter, it stays warm, which is great. Um, it really helps to depensate uh, what you would call DL, DL variations in temperature, daily changes in temperature. It helps to uh, depensate those. But with that, it's applied as a wet product. And it doesn't cure. It's not a chemical reaction. It's a physical reaction, right? You take clay, sand, and straw. You get it wet. You mix it up really well, and you apply it. Once it's dry, then comes a chemical reaction with linseed oil. But until it's dry, it is a slow drying process. When we started this process, it was pretty dry here in the Ozarks. And then came a month of wet, cloudy weather, meaning we, didn't, we haven't had the electricity to even run a dehumidifier or fans to be able to dry this out quicker. That's been complicated. Uh, we do have our wood stove set up, which helps to take some of the moisture out of the home. But, uh, <laughs> Not enough. So welcome to Homesteading 101. Uh, when you think you can do something uh, that you've never done before, we don't really know what limitations, what limitations you're going to run into. And this is a prime example of it. We started to get a, a little bit of a mold, a little bit of a haze on our floor. So we've treated it since. Um, and it's, it's killed it. It's remediated it. And we are getting it to dry finally, which is nice. Uh, but it's, it's been kind of an ordeal, uh, a little bit of an endeavor. Uh, a few more complications with homesteading in the winter here in the Ozarks uh, have been we, we decided we wanted chickens by spring, laying hens by spring, and we couldn't find uh, we couldn't find anybody locally selling good laying hens for an affordable price. So we decided to go with chicks. Uh, and it's been really cold out, so hence we have chicks in the house. Uh, we have 22 birds that we're raising up, so that's kind of gross, kind of complicated. We've done it about every winter of our lives. Uh, for some reason, we, we just continue to buy chicks in either the fall or we'll hatch chicks in late summer, uh, get bad fall weather, or we'll do it in the winter to where we have continually had chicks in the house every year of our life now for, I think, six years. Uh, I don't recommend it. It's kind of gross. It requires a lot of time in, in maintaining a clean enclosure. Um, but it will allow us to have fresh eggs come spring, which will be really nice. Uh, so anyways, this is our home. This is the progress we've made. Uh, it's been kind of slow because we've had to had to work on a lot of uh, livestock things, fence and enclosures and planting things for spring pastures, uh, clearing some of the forest, thinning some of the forest, etc. But this is home and it's getting kind of cozy. Uh, here within about a week we'll have our floors done and then we can finish our interior walls. We'll finish hanging sheetrock, uh, finish our electrical shortly thereafter and install of course our bathroom, our kitchen, things like that. Uh, get all that done before spring and before some really big work projects are necessary such as moving livestock, moving them out onto pastures um, and planting of course, planting for our 
our, our spring, summer, and fall produce as far as our winter storage crops, such as sweet potatoes and pumpkins. Um, so anyways, when you start your homestead, make sure to have a good plan. Also, as far as location and timing, uh, really investigate your weather patterns. We did not, we didn't expect this. We've lived in the Ozarks before, years ago, uh, but we lived at the complete other end of the Ozarks. We lived in um, pretty much southwest Missouri. Here, we're in northeast Arkansas. So we're literally on the opposite spectrum of, uh, of this huge eco region, right? Uh, several hundred miles across, several hundred miles north to south also. And uh, so the, the weather patterns can vary tremendously. This is a lot more wet than what we than what we had ever anticipated. Where we lived before, uh, it was pretty pretty dry fall. Uh, this has not been so. So make sure before you make any plans, really investigate your weather patterns. That has been a, a kick in our teeth all fall and winter. So thanks for checking out our videos. Hope you enjoy them. Uh, if you're interested in what we're doing, go to our website, storehouse51.org. If you're interested in any of our livestock or, uh, or whatnot, you can find some more information there. Thanks for watching our videos. God bless. Today, uh, here in the winter, in the Ozarks, it's a nice crisp day. It's been lovely. Um, and fortunately, with the upcoming cold snap that we have coming in here right around Christmas, we've been able to make a lot of progress on the house. We got it pretty much, uh, pretty much enclosed. Uh, got our siding up. Uh, we haven't done soffits yet, or fascias, or gutters. Hence why the plywood's down here along the bottom. Uh, water running off the roof hits the ground, causes splashback, and our siding's not sealed yet. It's a wood siding, uh, but we really don't want it. We don't want a whole bunch of water on it until it's sealed with a good oil-based sealant. So, hence the plywood along the bottom. Uh, yeah, we have a cozy little house down here, and as long as the sun's shining, we have ample ample electricity, and just the start of a nice little homestead nestled in the woods. So. Welcome to the house. We can walk this way. Hey. Right over here, uh, here's our solar system. We're on the north face of a mountain, so we don't get a whole lot of sun. We really only get about three hours of good sunlight each day, so it really limits our power. Uh, we also, here on the neighboring property, we're right at the edge of a property boundary, and there's a lot of, for a lot of forest, uh, a lot of coniferous trees, all these eastern red cedar. And they, of course, they don't shed their leaves, uh, being an evergreen. And so that blocks most of, our, most of our afternoon and morning sun here in the winter. When we first got here in August, it worked well. We were able to take in a lot of power, obviously, the sun being overhead. Now that's not the case. So we are limited on power, but this is our power source. This is our little, our little power plant. It works great as long as there's sun on it. Um, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, everything's a work in progress around here. Everything, always. Um, we're getting a shower house set up until we get our bathroom inside completed, which will be a little while. But in the meantime, uh, my brother, my wife, and I, we got this little shower house set up. It's just milled cedar uh, with a nice little propane outdoor outdoor shower burner, which is awesome, uh, hooked up right here next to our water tank. It is a godsend to be able to deal with all the dirty parts. Um, dealing with the dirty parts when you're homesteading, stuff gets dirty, <laughs> needless to say. but. This works and it keeps the wind off you, uh, which when you're trying to shower in 40 degree weather outside, it's really important. Um, it's great. Over here, again, this is our water system. Super rudimentary at the moment. Uh, really, really rudimentary, but 
it's what it is. Uh, each day here with freezing temps, we got to fill up buckets and tanks and totes and stuff for the next morning chores. Um, right now we're going through about 30 gallons of water a day be between the hogs and us, uh, not including bathing. So that's just like domestic use. That's just for drinking water supply and cooking about 30 gallons a day. So uh, it's been freezing at night, thawed out in the day. So until we get our tank partially buried and our water lines buried, this is what we got to work with. Uh, fill up the water midday, therefore we have chore water for the next morning. Uh, we have a lot of lactating and gestating sows at the moment. And they require a lot of water. Each sow is between two to four gallons of water a day, depending on her size and, uh, and where she's at in her gestational period. So you can do the math. Um, we go through a lot of water. So water issues in the winter with homesteading. They're fun. We're gonna, here in our next video, I want you guys to stay tuned. We're gonna be processing a pig. Uh, always is kind of a sad day. But in this case, he's a young boar. We weren't sure if we were going to keep him or not um, or sell him as breed stock. We've decided since that we're not going to. He doesn't fit the uh, really the confirmation that I want. He has some good characteristics, but others that I don't want to pass on. So we're going to get ready to process him. Uh, a lot of people are worried about boars being uh, tasting bad. We don't find that with our breed, with this American guinea hog breed. We don't find that they get that boar taint. It's called boar taint. Uh, it's produced by a, a chemical called scatol or scatol. It uh, gives some boars a just a disgusting flavor, honestly. Really gamey, wild flavor uh, that honestly tastes like rotten urine smells, right? It produces, that, that's the chemical that they produce. It's called scatol. Um, this breed, as long as you process them when they're younger, they don't get that. This little boy, he's about eight, nine months old, maybe 10. Uh, he should weigh in at about 100, 110 pounds, 120 pounds, and he's gonna be tasty. So check out this video. Get your taste buds and salivary glands going. Thanks for watching our videos.